During the history of this channel, I have shared three ways for having recurring tasks in Notion. It is true that they all needed a little bit of sorcery to work, but they worked. But now Notion has heard the request of practically every Notion user, and they have built what is the first in-app automation ever for Notion. So we can say that we finally have recurring tasks in Notion. But before you get too excited, they need a little bit of tweaking for really behaving as a recurring task. And this is what I'm going to show you in this video. And after we are done with the recurring task, I'm going to show you a couple of other examples that we can use this new feature. But now let's dive right in. OK, so what does this feature really do? So I have created this um, database to show you. And this database has a template over here. So what this feature really does is that we now can select a frequency in which we want this template to be created. OK, so these are the options every day. This is pretty straightforward. Every X number of days, always the same. And we can also select the time in which this template is going to be created. So with created, I mean that a new row in this database is going to be created according to this template that we create. So this option number one, then if we want the task, I mean, in, in our case, uh, to be created every other day, uh, we will go to the repeat weekly option and we will select here the days in which we want this to be created automatically. Same stuff. We have the time here and then monthly, yearly, this all pretty straightforward. I'm not going to dive too deep into this. OK, so. When I saw this, I thought this was going to be like the, the panacea for recurring tasks, but it's not. Let me explain you why. Because, for example, if we add a date property, which will be our due date, this date cannot be relative. So if we are creating uh, this task over and over, let's say that we select here November 24th, then every time that we create this task automatically is always going to have November 24th in the DO date. So this is not ideal because we will want that this date was relative to the time that the task was created. This is like a true recurring task, but we don't have this option. And why is this important? Because, for example, let's say that I do my weekly review every Friday and during the weekly review, I plan the tasks for the upcoming week, which is what I really do. So. I would like that at the time that I sit down to plan my next week, I have already the recurring task of that following week there waiting for me so I can take them into account when I'm scheduling the week. So yes, that will not be possible uh, with the feature as is, but we can get a little bit creative. And let me assure you, this is going to be a very easy setup, no complicated formulas whatsoever, and we can really get this done. But before we jump into how this is going to be built, Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because this helps me a ton to put these videos in front of more people so we can all have recurring tasks in our Notion workspaces. OK, so for this setup, I'm just going to need five properties. The first one is this one, the DO date. This is going to be used for the non recurring tasks. OK, so this in any task manager is a must. But really, for recurring tasks, we don't really need. But I'm just going to leave it there. Then we need another property to distinguish which is a recurring task or not. And this is just going to be a checkbox property. Now, I want to know the date in which the task was created, because my purpose is that then I'm going to add as many days as I want to that date. And that is going to give me the due date for the recurring task. OK, maybe it was a little bit complicated to explain, but let me show you and I assure you that it's going to make sense. So now we need the created time. This is an automated property, so nothing to set up here. Now, we need a place to add the number of days for the recurring task that we are going to delay the created time. And finally, what we need is a formula to calculate the real DO date. So what do I want this formula to do? If the task is not recurring, I want that here the output is the same as this one. In this case, November 24th. That's it. This is going to serve me to also use the task manager for non recurring tasks, of course. Then what happens if the task is recurring? So I will want that this gives me the created time plus X number of days that I write here. This is what is going to allow me to create the recurring task seven days in advance, for example, which is the case that I need for my weekly review. I need this task to be created on Friday morning. So when I get to my weekly review on that same Friday in the evening, 
I can see the recurring tasks in the following week, okay? But then sometimes things happen and I need to reschedule even the recurring tasks. So I need also a way to be able to do so. And this is what this third point is all about. If the task is recurring and I add a DO date over here, I want this to overwrite whatever other date was in there before. Okay, so this is gonna have more prevalence to the previous recurring date. Okay, so let's build this formula. So if and the property recurring task is true, so this means that the checkbox is checked and I'm writing this and because I need two statements here and that also the DO date is empty. Empty DO date. So if these two things happen, that is a recurring task and that there is no DO date, then I want this to be the created time. What this date add formula is doing is to add a date by the amount that we place over here. And the amount that we want is the this property, the days delay. And the measurement is in days. And if this is not the case, is in this thing over here is not the case, eh, I want just the DO date to be returned. Oh, sorry, I missed here a equal true. Okay, so this is the final formula. And you can find the formula in the description of this video, just in case you wanna copy it. So what this formula is doing is exactly this. So now, if the task is recurring, and this is empty, let's say that I want this to be due seven days after the task was created, so this is December 1st, because today is November 24th. But if I write something here, okay, this is gonna be written in the formula, okay, which is what we wanted. Okay, so we have the setup ready. Now, let's turn this into the weekly review. And this is a template, okay? So we want this task to be recurring and the days of delay, we want seven because we want to create them on the Friday morning and to be due seven days after that because it's gonna be the following weekly review. So the template is ready. Now let's set up the repeating. Today is Thursday, but for the sake of this video, let's trigger this now. I want it every week, let's say on Thursday, okay, so let's say that I do the weekly review on Thursdays now. And on Thursday, now is 7.22, so 7.23 p.m. And let's see what happens. Okay, so this was created, now is 7.23, weekly review, these are recurring tasks, days delay 7, and the DO date is 7 days from now. Okay, so now, if we want to show this into a calendar, we will have to select over here, show calendar by, the formula that we have created. And here, we are here today, and this is due on the next week. There is only one downside over here, and it is that I cannot drag this to any other day, because it is a formula, and we cannot modify the formulas like this. So if I wanna change the due date to, to this one, I will just have to select any other day and the formula will do the rest. So I mean, it's just one click more, it's no big deal. But yes, this is the only, the only downside. And if I clear it, then the date goes back to the, the one that I set by default. And of course, now I'm using this calendar view and I'm showing the, the formula date property, this one. And this is also going to apply to every view that you use. So if you are using a view to see what you need to get done today, in this filter, you will have to use the formula over here. Due date is today, for example, okay? But you will always have to use this formula property instead of the DO date, like the normal date property. This is the only thing to take into account. Now, let me show you over here how I have built my, my own recurring tasks. Here I have the monthly financials, monthly review. So this is built to be repeated every one month. And here uh, is the recurring. So this one, it is recurring, days of delay six, and I wanna do it every 24th of the month. So in the end, it's gonna be due for the 30. And the same apply to 
everything. Monthly review, weekly review, write newsletter, this is something that I do weekly, prepare Twitter content, also something that I do weekly. And now if I go to my calendar, I can see them already prepared for the next iteration. This write newsletter was created automatically, for example. So now, which other uses we can give to this new feature? We can use it for a daily journal, or if you are working for a company or in a company, you can use it for your daily stand-up meeting, for example. So a new entry gets created every day. But there is one thing of the feature that I haven't mentioned, which is this one. Let me show you. Within the templates, we can write here at, so I just pressed at the at sign, this one, and today date when duplicated, okay? So what this is going to do, every time that this template gets created, this is gonna read today's date, okay? This is the, a true relative date. This we don't need. And here we can have whatever template we want for our daily journal. Okay, let's say that this is the template that I want for my journal. I can also add a new icon, so every page has the same icon. And now to set it up, it's very easy. This is gonna be, let's say just from Monday to Friday. So for that, we will have to choose every week and select from Monday through Friday, every week and starting today, that's fine. And let's select here 7.30 p.m. So we can see it running. And here it is, today's journal, it's already ready. And this is November 24th. And if you think a little bit more, we can use the same thing for habit tracking. So let's say that this is a habit tracker. We just have to add over here some checkbox properties for, I don't know, drinking two liters of water, going to the gym, reading, okay? And then we can also use the created time property to have automatically which was today's date. And then we can group by that property. We can date by week. So this way we will be able to calculate weekly like what was the percent of each of the habits that we have done. This we don't need in the view. And we have a very simple habit tracker because this is gonna be created every day from Monday through Friday. Of course, you can change that if you don't like that frequency. And we have here a habit tracker that is gonna be creating weekly groups, so five entries per week, and we will be having here the averages of every habit. So I hope you like this video. I think this feature is pretty revolutionary because for me, it also means the beginning of in-app, like real in-app automations inside of Notion. So I like where the company is going with this. I hope this was helpful and as always, hasta la próxima.